the hymn writer wrote, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Not some of them. Not just a part of them, but all our sins. We can take it to him. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. What a
this morning you kept us in our right mind. And Father God, we thank you for more than just dying on the cross. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the life after the cross. Thank Father. you. We thank you, Father God, for the roof that you put over our heads, the clothes mm -hmm. on our backs still, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for health and strength. Thank you, Father. We thank you for everything that you have done there, Father mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for dangers that could have been in our midst this mm -hmm. morning, but you kept us away one more day. From dangers seen and unseen. Thank you, Father. And Father God, as we come together, every family that's represented here, every Thank officer, you. Father, every saint, we come, dear Father God, to partake in this celebration right of what now. you have done, right Father God. Father God. Lord, we know if it wasn't for you, it wouldn't be no Passover at all, dear Thank Father you. God. And Lord, we just thank, thank you. you. Even though we're in celebration mode, we thank you for sickness passing over. Thank thank you. You. We thank you, dear Father God, for trials and tribulations thank passing over. Thank you, Father, thank we you. thank you for thank all you. the things that you protect us from, yes. Father thank God. You. We thank God one day they was in Egypt and they, they had blood on the door, poor, yeah. Father God. But Lord, we know that you're looking down from heaven right now, man, yeah. and you see the blood. And for fear of him, 
the peoples did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring the disciples word. Our scripture for today, St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. 
Okay, okay, we'll come back. Okay. Now we'll have E is for Everyone by Corden. There be nothing for us but fear and death. 
What will be said when no way to cope, that will rain off without any help. If Jesus be dead in a grip of a tomb, will have no future, only dark and gloom. No life or death, no eternity in sight, no hope, no joy, no savior, no life. But, and aren't we glad now? Oh, but there's a but. But thanks be to God, Jesus rose to life. The dead all paid through sin was right. His body lay in the tomb three days, then up from the grave his life was raised. Yes, thanks to be God, Jesus rose to life. He conquered the dead, all sin and strife. To those who believe from their set free, with hope, with joy, the Savior was rose. Yes. 
How many people, when they get their business all fixed up and they finish on this race, on this side, how many people really want to go back with Jesus? How many people want to go with Jesus? Jesus told his disciples on many occasions what was going to happen to him. They, some people act concerned and some people didn't. Some people, they, emotions took over them when, they, when Jesus told them what was going to happen. This isn't that how people is today. Uh, Jesus has done so much for us, but you know, somebody waiting to go to the beach or somebody waiting to go to the club or somebody following their mails or somebody got their phone looking at what time it is. Why? Because we didn't put Jesus first like we should have put him first. There's a scripture that says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. But, brothers and sisters, life is in the name of Jesus. When we pray, when anybody pray like that, they, when they pray, they say, in the name of Jesus. Uh, or you will be healed if, if you just believe and trust in God. Say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. You'll be delivered. There's some people that are going through some things that they need deliverance from. But if you say, in the name of Jesus, why are we using his name? Because he's the authority over everything that we're going to go through, every pain, every sickness. Um, anybody ever went to a football game? Yes. Anybody ever went to a basketball game? Yes. Can somebody tell me how is the audience at a football game or basketball game? I haven't been to one in a long time. Can somebody tell me, how does the audience say? Oh, oh, can somebody give me an example of oh, the basketball team? <laughs> Who will say that again? Go ahead. No, no, I need that. Go ahead. Let's go, dog. Let's go. He said, let's go. Let's go, let's go team, Jesus. Y'all ain't going to help me cheer Jesus on it. Jesus can't do it. Nobody can. Outside. 
So I'm like, yes, you can pray for me. So when I got finished, one the young lady that stayed with my grandma, she said, don't worry about my grandma, because my grandma crazy. My uh, brothers and sisters, we got to stop doing that to old people. We try to make old people think they're crazy because so they're telling us the right thing to do. It's these old people that keep you out of jail. It's these old people that pray for you when nobody else won't pray. And God knows it's the old people that's bailing you out when all your friends are turning their back. So we thank God. So she said, well, don't worry about grandma. Grandma, grandma kind of crazy. Don't worry about grandma. Anybody ever do that to you? You start talking about Jesus, they act like you crazy. They act like you ain't got no sense. Like you, you praising an invisible God, an invisible Jesus. But anyway, so I finished the refrigerator and I said, okay, um, lady, you can pray for me. And then what the lady told me to do, we was outside in front of all those people. She said, now get down on your knees and raise your hands to the Lord and pray to God. And I said, lady, I'm not going to do that. Because I was too embarrassed. I was too ashamed. Plus, I was young. I wasn't old. I ain't need Jesus then. I ain't had nothing to get on my knees and praise God for. Brothers and sisters, but I kept living. God spared my life. I got older and older. Yeah. I went into trouble and difficulties, trials and, and, and tribulations, things with relatives that went wrong. Some of my relatives died. Some of my relatives got put in prison. Some of my relatives was homeless. Brothers and sisters, when I got serious with God, I went to go back to that lady and tell the lady that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That was September the 22nd, 1997. I'm 53 years old. I've been in church my whole life. And I was not saved my whole life. And I wasn't holy my whole life. And I wasn't greater than Jesus my whole life. But when God came into my life, when I had trouble in my life, I went back to tell that lady, I have Jesus now. And one of my favorite hymns, Deacon Jackson, I'm not ashamed to own my own or to defend his cause. Why? Because God has done something for me. He resurrected in my heart all those years ago, and he still is here with us. He's here with us today. Yeah. He's with our children. He's with our family. He's with, he's got everything to do with us. Do anybody has, has everybody accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Because yes. I thought, you know, maybe I went too fast. Maybe I should have made sure everybody knows Jesus first. But everybody knows Jesus, right? Yes. I wish I had a, 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 a detective, a Jesus detective, oh Jackson. I could go around and point it like the temperature thing and say, yeah, Jesus, no, yeah. yes. And so everybody needs Jesus. Oh, yeah. And so being yes, saying that, and I just want us to understand the principle of what Jesus did. Now let me just ask a question and I get ready to close. Any perfect people in the building? No. 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 Maybe the grown people ain't perfect. Any perfect teenagers? No. No, no perfect. What about babies? We got little babies with us. There. Any perfect babies? No. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and failed short of the glory of God. Alright, so 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 we just got that saw that there's no perfect people in there, right? So so we we agreeing, right? No perfect people. People in here, right? Okay. Yeah. Are y'all agreeing with me? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, is there anybody here that didn't sin? No. Nobody sin. Everybody sin every now and then. Yeah. Every every blue moon. No. I got to say, say a white lie. But every now and then, being a sinner like most sinners, but every now and then we fall in sin. So we all have a sin problem, right? That that we sin. That's why we ask God to forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all sin and evil. Right? So since everybody sinned, did Jesus die for everybody here? Yes. He died. He died. Okay. Anybody when they was growing up, you ever got in trouble with your parents? Like you did something and you know you was wrong and you know when they got home you were gonna be a woman? Yes. I mean, they, 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 I know they whooped most of us in our days. I don't know if y'all didn't come from us today. But they, they whooped most of us. They whipped most of us. Not a whoop, but they whipped us. Like Jesus got whipped. We got whipped, right, for the reason. But the thing about it, we got whipped because we did something wrong, right? We got whipped because we disobeyed God. Everybody here had a whooping? Everybody had a whooping? Yes. Yeah. I don't see the hands. 
Minister Payne, 21 years old. That's his mom that's walking to the back. I proposed to my wife in the church when I got right. I've been in church at least 21 years of his life. Amen. Trying to live the right way. Yes. When people say I could have been dead and gone, brothers and sisters, I really could have been dead and gone. Wow. I drove off the side of the road. I slept on the burning uh, sofa. Not by, it was by accident. I was uh, working in an area on the ground where one of the poisonous snakes in the state of Florida. I could have got bit. But the thing that's most unique about God that I testify about, you ever heard of a movie called Flatline? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. right, the movie called Flatline, you know when we do communion service? Yes. We have a body of Jesus laid up here. Yes. And we do partake of that. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Uh -huh. Well, I went into the hospital. And when I was into the hospital, they laid me on the table. And they stopped my heart. Meaning, I wasn't breathing no more. For a couple of seconds, my heart wasn't pumping. And they shocked me with those things. And they brought me back to life. But it made me sign a paper that is not guaranteed that I live after this. And God woke me up another day. My oh. brother-in-law called me Gathers. Oh. So all I'm sharing with you young people, it is real. Yes, it is. It's something about the name Jesus. We, we don't act like this for no reason. We don't talk about Jesus. He's not Casper the Friendly Ghost. Jesus lives and Jesus is for real. Oh, yes. and brothers and sisters, if I can name all the saints that got blessed that belong to this church, we'll be here all oh, yes. day. Oh, yes. Yes. And a lot of them related to some of everybody that's oh, yes. in the building. Oh, yes. So we want to just thank God for that. Uh, we'll turn it over to Mother Payne. Amen. Yes, uh, this is from our um, hospitality. We have hospitality committee here. Mother said, Mother, we're not here, so thank you for Amen. We can, uh, have anything you want to say? Uh, I do have uh, one statement to make. We have a flyer here, and the flyer is, uh, is, 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 is really an invite, it's an invitation. So I was going to share these with all of y'all before you all can. We're still here Saturday, fourth, and fifth Sunday, and we do Bible study online. We listen to it with conference, call, participate in it. You can also do Zoom, but um, and we've got all the information on here. We'll be glad to share um, with, it, with any, anyone in here who, is, who would like to receive a copy. And everyone out the service, See Mother Payne, Elder Payne, or Deacon Mariah, we getting ready to go into our association. He should have some flyers for the days that uh, will be attended. So if anybody interested in attending our association and see one of us, we'll get the information. We'll forward to um, an email. We'll get the information to you in any kind of way that we can. Also, uh, to all our new mothers and deaconesses, anything in the association that you want to participate in, you can. I forgot what day we got coming, but all the churches from the state of Florida that's in that organization or that association, they'll be there and you will be a partaker in any part of that event that you want to. I believe that we're the only uh, church that's in the Florida association, but we're in another state. So, I mean, I think it's a blessing. Everybody that want to attend can attend. I uh, just wanted to let you know that. Uh, all now we do. Um, even that school, you probably got to give the details on the Easter egg, right? You got to look Easter egg, right? Yes. Um, for the kids, the eggs have already been made. Uh, so since we start, the pastor dismissed us. Um, let the kids go out first, and the eggs are hidden all on this side. So, now keep in mind. And there's oh, so sorry, three five eggs with money in, in them. So. Y'all were gonna say, keep in mind, this was intended for the kids. So kids, don't let them go. 
beat you out there and get y'all money. <laughs> but anyway, we got some eggs here, you know, keeping the tradition, keeping it fun uh, for the kids. Uh, yes, ma'am. And the refreshments. And we do have refreshments in the kitchen. So while your kid finding the eggs, you can be refreshing in the kitchen. All right, we got refreshments. All right, so all uh, artists and minds pay. Anybody have anything else to say? All right. Let us stand for a little dictum. I want to say thank you to everybody that came out that made this possible. We have to have an Easter service from the three years that I've been here. So everybody here just made history. So y'all thank y'all so much for doing this. Plus, I need y'all help, so don't let this be our last time. Please come back. If you're a member of this church, please get more involved. There's a lot of things on our place to do. I thank God for everybody that's here. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before we come before your throne once again. Father God, we thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for all of the kids that's here. We thank you for all the family members and who they represent for being here. Father God, we just ask you to bless us as we depart from you, but not from this place, not from your Holy Spirit, and not from your guidance, Father God. And Father, we ask you to watch over one another until we meet again. And now we are once dead. Buried, resurrected, and ascended Savior. May his love rest and rule in the Bible for now and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. I'm going to say, Amen. Oh.